Hello YouTubers, it is of course I, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another video. So recently I had uh, taken down and swapped out a light uh, for my sister for my nephew's bedroom. They had this like weird looking uh, baseball fan light that if I can try and find pictures of I will show, uh, but it was like some weird baseball bat fins and this was the actual dome on the light which was this um, white like milky glass dome with of course this painted on uh, stitching. Uh, and what I was thinking is that this could make for a really cool lamp. There's going to be a couple of things for that process. One is going to be taking off this red stitching because it looks kind of ridiculous. And two is making a custom uh, base stand out of it. I'm going to try and use walnut and red, uh, red oak. Uh, this isn't how it's going to look when finished, but just proof of concept. You can see that this would be like... I'm going to try and make more of a square base to it, but... Pretty much set this into the wood, put a light in it. Uh, I was thinking RGB so that way I can do different colors and stuff and basically go from there. The funny part is, is that like this, it honestly kind of looks like I could just put a trophy here and it'd be like a little baseball stand slash plaque, but that's not what I'm going for. All right, so I got this brand new table saw set up. Uh, we bought it for other reasonings, but this is going to be perfect for this. And what I want to do here is to cut off about a two inch cut of this walnut here, saving the rest of this board uh, for other uses, because this walnut is very expensive. Um, so I'm basically just gonna fire this up and start cutting. Safety glasses, got ear protection. Let's get going. I stopped the uh, saw before pulling it all the way out because I didn't want to accidentally brush against the, uh, the blade. So we have this nice, looks like a pretty nice strip of uh, walnut we just cut out of there. The idea is, is because this red oak here isn't wide enough to actually make a good base for the other, uh, the globe by itself because by the time I cut a hole in there it's going to be almost the same size as the hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and then I'm going to insert this uh, walnut into the center of it to make a thicker board that I can then cut a square out of and use that as the, uh, the base for the globe. So I'm going to now cut this and then I'm going to split it and we're going to get that for later on. So what I've done here is I've set the depth of this blade to match this piece of wood here. And ideally I would use a miter saw to make this cut, but the miter saw I have is packed up in storage, so it's not uh, <clears throat> the easiest thing to get out. So I'm gonna actually be using this table saw in order to make a quick length cut before we split it down the center. Didn't I forgot it. to lock it in place. <laughs> Alright, so we want this to be cut as center as possible, but the problem is is that trying to take into account the blade width versus the board side and tolerances and stuff um, <clears throat> can be a little bit tricky. So what I simply did here upon my dad's suggestion is put a little black marker at exactly halfway uh, in the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this to get that black marker as center as possible with the blade. So that way, hopefully, by the time we're done cutting it, the cut will be more or less as center as we can possibly get it. So I'm going to lock this, and we're going to cut this. All 
All right, so this would be the concept idea for the base. I'm just gonna have to clamp and glue these together and I have a new wider board to work with that has a little bit of character due to the accent of the uh, walnut mixed in with the red oak. Uh, the thing is we do have a little tiny bit of spacing that could be either from a slight wander of the saw or it could be just how the boards originally were cut because especially if they're not specifically meant for super high precision like furniture work or whatever, uh, they can have slight tolerances. Uh, I could maybe trim off the edges uh, just to touch and fix that, but I think that clamping pressure might be able to work that out anyways. So it's looking pretty good. I like the contrast between the red oak and the walnut. And I think this is going to be a fun one to continue to work with. Um, so what I have here is I have some tight bond wood glue. I'm going to do as best as possible to try and keep it just on the edges here and not oversaturate uh, anything. So, because uh, I don't want it squeezing out onto the face. So I'm just going to try and get a decent coating, but not, again, going overboard in terms of that. And then when I do get these boards coated, I'm going to clamp them together. So I got this side here coated. I'm also going to do a light coating on this side too. Uh, and then same for this side and this side. Those will be stuck together. But again, I need to take care of these other edges real quick. Okay, those sides are now thoroughly covered with glue. I'll just be able to rinse out that brush with some water and soap and it will allow me to have it again for something in the future. Even though if they're cheap, you might as well reuse what you can. So now, it'll just be a, a process of pressing these together like so, and getting them lined up and then clamping them. Careful not to put too much pressure on them just yet because we don't want them rolling over, which they could do if you apply uneven pressure. And when I'm clamping this, I can see the joints immediately pull in uh, a bit. I'm gonna try and level this. Them doing that though is important because we want to make sure that there's a little gap as possible in it. Uh, so we are getting a little bit of the glue squeezing up here. Usually you'd take a wet rag or something. I'm just going to be using a wet piece of paper towel. And this needs to be sanded anyways before I actually finish. So if there's a little bit on the surface. It's not going to be a huge deal. So I have the rest of this red oak here. It's a pretty flat board. So I'm actually going to use it as the base to clamp this to. I take a little piece of wax paper here and put it underneath just to make sure if any glue does squeeze out. Additionally from here, it doesn't glue <clears throat> to this board here. And then I'm gonna do the same here with the top and another board. Now I did clean off the excess glue on the back side too off camera. So both sides have been cleaned of excess glue. Now it's a simple process of just taking and additionally clamping this board across here. And after I clamp this, what this will do is just help make sure that this surface stays uh, relatively flat. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of additional pressure now that we have that stability and these edge ones here. Uh, these squeeze clamps can be good for things like this where you don't need super high loads of pressure. And it looks like it's pretty good to me. Basically, I'm just going to let this sit for 24 hours before I uh, depressurize it, and we should hopefully have a nice solid board. Okay, so I have it here. Uh, bad news is I can feel a little bit of a ridge on this side as this piece of wood migrated down slightly during the drying process. Um, one of the problems with this is that this piece of walnut wasn't... 100% flat. Um, my friend actually got it for me from somebody else and it was originally a, um, a board that was like two inches I think and he cut it down using a table saw by cutting it vertically then flipping it and cutting it again in order to make it uh, 
about this size. The only problem is, is that it did leave some, um, it did leave some minor like imperfections on this one side here. Um, so because of that slight tolerance difference, it probably let it just shift down a bit because it wasn't being compressed perfectly flat, but it's not a big deal. I can just simply take this and sand it, but you can see I have a, a nice solid strong uh, blink to work with and when I put the finish on this I have a feeling that it's gonna look really really good so yeah so now that we have this board and it's all set up very strong flexing it I'm trying to flex it right now um, it does have these ridges which I don't want easiest thing would be to just run this through a planer but I don't have one of those uh, for right now I am left with the good old option of hand sanding uh, this is a 3M rubber sanding block. If I can find it, I will link it below uh, if you're anyone's interested in buying one. These are like invaluable in my opinion when you're trying to hand sand stuff. It makes it so much easier. So I'm going to start with 220 grit and then I'm going to go to probably 400 then maybe 600 to finish. Basically what I'm just going to do with this is I'm going to keep going back and forward this way this way until these ridges more or less hopefully disappear but basically just keep mixing up the uh, patterns that I have in order to try and make sure I don't take off too much material in one area can already feel the ridge has gone down so this is just kind of a process I'm gonna have to go through and I'll check back in a, a bit after I get this taken care of that's after the 220 I got it fairly smooth I mean I can still feel a little bit of a ridge but it doesn't need to be absolutely 100% perfect it feels pretty good for what I'm looking for so I'm gonna swap this out for the 400 grit sandpaper and continue the sanding process. I now did the 400 grit. It's uh, fairly smooth. The wood's actually taking up a very like mild sheen to it. Uh, now I'm just gonna move to the 800 grit. I don't actually have any 600, so I'm just gonna go to 800 and then I'm gonna call it good in terms of trying to get this surface smooth. I also did a rough sand on the back. This isn't as important. Uh, I will be sealing it just to make sure that it is sealed, but it's obviously not the show piece, so you can see this is just a very rough sand with the 220 versus, you know, a good sand with the 220 and 400 so far. So this is after the 800 grit now. Uh, what's cool is that it actually is now semi-shiny. It's hard to see without the right angle, but I will try and see if I can demonstrate this. I'll have to crank this way down. See? You can see that there is definitely a shine to it. Very mild shine, but it's funny how a little bit of sandpaper can manage to give something a shine like that. On the back here, there definitely is a couple of spots where I didn't get the best joint on it. And I'm kind of worried that when I go to cut the hole, uh, for the actual globe to sit into that this might not have as much structural integrity as I want it to because there's kind of this openish joint in the back. So I'm going to try and hopefully rectify that a little bit by taking, uh, I was going to use masking tape. I don't have any masking tape around. I don't know what happened to it, but by taking some tape and taping a thin line right here a lot along this joint and just in the back side so i'm not gonna worry about the front side right now but just in the back side dripping more wood glue in there hopefully allowing it to seep in and then i'm gonna sand it down to being flush again so again i'm using this plastic i'm taping it and i'm just leaving a little tiny area uh, for the glue to seep into the joint there this will just let me it's probably unnecessary because this is the back side It'd be more critical on the front side where I need it to look prettier, but uh, this will just hopefully allow me to remove this plastic tape and take off uh, any of the wood glue that might have wanted to seep into the wood around the edges. Um, just keep this a little bit cleaner and easier to deal with. 
That's the idea, at least. I'm going to be using this syringe to just kind of apply some wood glue right into these joints here. It's an opportunity to learn, I suppose. Gonna agitate a little bit, hoping it flows into the crack better. This seems to have done uh, all right and set up. It seems like it did work its way down into those cracks. So the idea here is that I should be able to always just peel away most of that glue. and uh, leave a fairly decent uh, track right inside the crack, which looks to be what has happened here. For the most part, that seems to have kept it where I wanted it. And not really everywhere else. So yeah, that filled in the gaps pretty good. Hopefully that will add some additional strength, which is the reasoning why I end up doing this. You might hear some coffee brewing in the background. That is because I am brewing coffee in the background. I was originally going to buy some paint stripper in order to strip that off, but my dad suggested trying to use uh, this carburetor cleaner. He tried it. I told him, go ahead if you want to try. He tried it and it seemed like it ended up taking it off pretty good, so probably better just to use paint stripper if you have it, but if you didn't, and if this is a better option, then it turns out that this um, carburetor cleaner so happens to, uh, to do the job too. Just like that. Maybe not as well or easy as paint stripper might, but it works, and it was something I already had on hand, so I'm just going to go through the process of uh, cleaning off this red paint on this thing and getting it to being just a, a pure white dome. So we now have this nice white dome to work with. Though I do have a better blade on the table saw that would be more akin to uh, a finishing edge, uh, the problem is, is because I did end up uh, manually <clears throat> gluing these together, they're not perfectly flat, so I couldn't use either side of these as a straight edge for a table saw. Uh, and I don't have a sled for the table saw to just make perfectly straight cuts, so instead I'm going to rely on this uh, miter saw. I don't have a good finishing blade on this miter saw. This is actually only a 40 tooth. You'd usually want to use like a 60 to like 90 tooth, but it seems like it does fairly decent cuts, and because I'm going to be routering the edges, at least on the one side anyways, it's not super critical if there's some tear out on that side, and then the bottom is not going to be very visible, so also not super critical if there's going to be tear out. I do want to protect this wood from the clamp though, so we'll be using this piece of scrap. I'll be trying to line this up to take off as little material as possible, and then I'm going to really clamp this down, making sure that Shouldn't have to have any problems with drifting. So this is one of the trickiest parts about this, uh, trying to get it right, is getting this board center and then cutting it. So what I did is I dropped this and pretty much what it comes down to is I need four centimeters on each side. And that is what I have. So we're ready to cut this, but I found when just trying to use a hole saw like this, especially when I don't have a bit to stabilize it, which I do not, because I specifically want to get uh, the puck out of here intact. Uh, the blade can kind of wobble and wander a bit when first cutting. So what I want to do is I want to take a piece of plywood and put it in between here on the hole saw blade as a sacrificial board that will take any damage that this might have if there's initial wander or if there is um, 
any type of warping of the blade, which I actually have seen the blade can flex quite a bit when it first starts cutting. What I'm hoping to do is to remove this clamp, slide this in, and then reclamp it and then clamp from the other side. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these as close to the edge as possible so that way I can get this board into there. So I'm gonna release this side, lined up. I'm just gonna slide this board in place. So I'm gonna clamp that. I'm gonna clamp this right here temporarily. So that way there'll be more clamping pressure to hold this in place as I adjust this clamp onto here. I adjust this clamp onto here. I think I might be able to get it a little bit better. This, in this case I feel the more clamps the better because we do not want absolutely any type of wandering that's going on. So that still seems like it's lined up. We're we'll putting this one upside down over here so that way uh, it doesn't interfere with the ability of me to turn this lever for doing the cut. So. If you could see, when I first started cutting it, it actually, the blade did do exactly what I was talking about, where it warped a whole bunch and clamped us. And hopefully we have a pretty decent center cut. Oh, look at that, beautiful. The edges are really nice on there too. That looks great. So yeah, that, that looks very, very nice. Uh, now I just gotta get the pucks out of here. However, I, I can stick my finger in there and push it out, but not being dumb, I'm gonna unplug that device first because sure as heck wouldn't want that going off, turning on, should I say, while, uh, while my finger's in there. And look at that, look at that cool little uh, walnut and red oak puck, it actually came out perfect. Now the reason why we put this top piece of wood on here is you see the edges of it got all marred up at first as the blade sort of flexed and wandered a little bit. But the piece below it came out perfectly. I know the blade does this because I had this issue before while trying to make a little walnut puck. But that came out beautifully. This came out beautifully and we're ready to continue. Yeah. 